Hello and welcome. I'm Elizabeth and in this video, I'm going to be taking you along with me just throughout the house and we're going to be making some changes for the new year. I'm feeling very inspired. I always do this time of year just to refresh things. I have a fresh perspective and so we're going to be working in the dining room, making that look a little bit refreshed for winter and I have some thrifted decor that we're going to style together. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks on how I like to hang some of my art and wall decor that I think you'll find really useful. We're even going to pleat a lampshade. We're going to do a fun customized uh, little detail on some new stools that I have. Just tons of fun stuff in this video. I hope that you enjoy. Please like this video if you found any of it enjoyable. I know that you will. So uh, anyway, let's get into it. Well, as you saw, we have a lot to do in this video, but why don't we start in the dining room and see what we can do to kind of reimagine this, give it a fresh start. Um, this room was very heavily decorated for Christmas so I kind of wanted to tone it down simplify it for winter and also kind of change the color palette I have some new chairs for the room that I'll be sharing with you and those were kind of my inspiration for Kind of what I want to do next. I feel like a room always um, Gets its identity from the rug that crowns it. So we are using this gorgeous vintage rug from revival and I like that it's more neutral, more simple. And if you've ever been wanting a vintage rug, I highly recommend Revival. I have a 10% off discount code for you. It'll be down in the description. But don't sleep on it because it's only good until January 13th. By the way, these tufted chairs are from costway.com and I really love shopping with them. They offer just a wide variety of household goods. I've gotten many things from them and I tell you if you're looking for an alternative to a very big online retailer, you want fast shipping, you want a wide variety of quality household goods that are priced very competitively, check out costway.com. And I'm excited for these chairs because I like the fact that you can change the covers on them and that gives me the versatility of changing my decor out, which is what I'm all about. So my dad's letting me borrow, <laughs> I put that in air quotes, this vintage sailboat. And I saw a picture on Pinterest recently where somebody had it on their dining room table and I guess it stuck with me. So I decided to try mine up there. Next, let's hang some winter art that I recently thrifted, but I want to put this painting within this frame, but I don't want to open it up and take the art out of it and try and fuss with all of that. So we're just going to use some double-sided tape and that's going to just adhere it perfectly to the outside of the glass and it's going to last as long as I need it to, but that way it's just quick and easy and fuss-free and no damage done. I've had these metal frames that I thrifted, oh, for many months now, and I thought they would look nice in the dining room. I also have these little oil paintings that I recently thrifted in my last video. I thought these would look nice in the dining room, so I popped them right underneath the sconces here. Speaking of sconces, I have had these up here in the foyer for quite a while they were very inexpensive i will link them down below but as you can see the shades are just very plain and i'm kind of all about 
pattern and some color this year for 2024. So I thought that we would play with a DIY no sew lampshade. I just took some ribbon and wrapped it around to get an idea of what it would look like. This first shade that you're seeing me begin with, I did make some mistakes, but I figured it out. So I'm going to give you some helpful tips and tricks if you ever decide to pleat your own lampshades. So what I did here is I started out with the strip unfolded and glued that down. But what I did on the next one is I had that piece already folded. My next piece was folded. You just need to make sure that you're matching up your pattern so that it's, and it does help to use strips of fabric such as a ribbon that's already pre-cut for you this one had some wire in it so it made it a little bit easier to crease it and keep its form as i was working with it but you can make the pieces of fabric or ribbon as wide as you would like your pleats i wrapped mine around the top and the bottom of the lampshade but when you do this you will have to put a piece of fabric along the inside of the lampshade to kind of cover that rough edge so you could also just stop with your fabric on the very edges of the lampshade just to make sure that they're a nice clean edge instead of wrapping into the inside of the shade hopefully that makes sense Okay, so the next thing I want to customize are these stools that I just purchased. I'll have these linked below for you. I liked the window pane fabric. I thought that was really kind of classic and timeless, but I thought that these were just lacking some character and personality. So I scrolled around on Pinterest until I found some inspiration. The idea of adding some tassel fringe onto the stool to give it the kind of custom look I was going for, make them look a little bit more vintage or old world so we're going to attach that and i'll show you how easy it is um, i also have another idea on how to kind of upgrade these just kind of retail looking stools So we're just working our way around using just plain old hot glue, a uh, clear hot glue that is, but there were a couple times where I ran into, oh, like this right here, the tassel had come apart, unraveled, so what I ended up having to do was cut the ribbon right at the uh, end of that tassel, and then... I was left with a couple open ends. So I'm going to show you how I kind of put the tassel fringe back together without having really any noticeable seams. So what you need to do is find the next tassel in your pattern. And here I'm measuring how much length I need in between so I know right where to cut so that all of the tassels are the same distance apart. And using the hot glue, we're just going to press that down. But the trick is to kind of get some hot glue on the outside of that seam so you don't get any fraying. And so it lays nice and flat. But once you have that there, you're going to want to dip your finger in some cool water and then kind of press it down to seal that hot glue that you placed over the outside of the seam.
So I'm still working on the dining room, giving it a little bit of a winter refresh in here, but I have some thrifted items on the table that I thought I would show you really quick before I put them away. So recently I have actually been finding some good stuff at the thrift stores. I feel like I haven't taken you guys with me in forever to go thrifting, so like this video if that's something you want to continue seeing more of in 2024. Um, usually those videos did well, but there's been some interesting things going on with the algorithm lately and they're just not recommending um, my top content like usual. So I don't know what's going on there, but um, regardless, I just want to bring you guys content that you enjoy and that I enjoy filming for you. So anyway, with that being said, um, so I found these two little wooden shelves thought these would look really cute um, bordering somewhere symmetrical with some cute uh, matching plates on the top. I was thinking maybe on either side of my fireplace. I also picked up another lampshade. I've really been enjoying um, recovering them, pleating them, and just using fun fabric that I have just to give them a... Um, you know, a more old world, unique look, one of a kind custom look, I guess. So I thought this was kind of a nice shape and maybe I could do something similar with that. And then I found this brass vase that I thought was really nice. It's super heavy, solid brass, it looks like, made in India. And I wanna say, I don't see the price on it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, $4 for that. I thought for that price, I should probably grab it. And then I don't think I showed you guys this, but I found this antique drop leaf table at Goodwill the other day for $7. And how could I possibly leave it behind? I had a couple ideas of where it could go. I mean, it's kind of a nice little size that it could, um, you know, it could go most places. So, but anyway, it's just really a pretty antique piece. I think it's pine, so it's a little more red, but it's just it's just a cool cool old table for seven dollars. I just couldn't leave it behind. So I'm thinking I still am having this vision of painting in here and green is kind of what I keep coming back to when I'm picturing it. So I have this vintage table runner and I wonder if I could stick it up on the wall to kind of give me an idea. Because if I do paint in here, I would also paint the fireplace, which it kind of needs. Um, kind of moving away from all the chippy stuff. It looks like this fireplace has been painted because I'm almost seeing kind of some nice wood. It might even be oak underneath here. So yeah, I might try and tack this up on the wall to give myself an idea of what a lighter green would look like in here. Okay, so here is the best decor or art hanging hack that I have ever come across, and I use it all the time. I have for years now. You've probably heard of it, but just in case you haven't, we are going to use or create, I should say, a template for our decor piece here, our little shelf that has two brackets on the back. So of course you're gonna measure, measure once, measure twice, measure three times, and then check to make sure everything is level. So there's the brackets I'm talking about. And then you're just going to want to take a piece of either double stick tape or painter's tape like I have here. And this is gonna be your template. So I like to make my tape or my template the same length as the item that I'm hanging. 
so that when I put the tape on the wall, I roughly know exactly where it's going so I can measure again. And then you're going to mark where your hanging hardware is. So I'm marking right in the center of those little teeth brackets so I know where my screw needs to go. And then this template you're going to stick on the line that I made and I'm using a chalk marker so I can easily wipe it off. Again, I'm gonna keep measuring and checking to make sure everything's level before I screw into the wall. And that's it. I have plaster walls, so I need to, to screw a pilot hole first so my walls don't crumble. But that's it and you should have a level shelf or piece of art or whatever it is. Well, I really hope that you're enjoying the video so far and that you're getting lots of decor hack ideas, winter decorating ideas, decorating with thrifted vintage finds. But this next thing that I'm going to show you that I'm doing on this particular day is kind of maybe a little silly, but it um, is something that just has been bothering me. And it's these cords that are just standing out like a sore thumb against you know, the wood trim and the flooring. So I recently got a sample of brown paint and I'm just going to paint that on this cord so that when it's laying on the floor, I don't notice it as much. And let me tell you something so insignificant and simple as this little task, it makes such a difference and just looks so much cleaner. And I want to say thank you again to Costway for gifting me these beautiful chairs. They really inspired me to just completely transform my dining room. So I hope you will tune in to the next videos that I have planned for just kind of refreshing our house. I have a kitchen makeover that's coming up next, I believe, with some really cool things. Subscribe. I'd love to have you here. Hit the like button and share this video. We will see you 